Good morning, everybody. Is it morning? Five minutes. Good morning, everybody. It's Lynn, the leather bag lady. How are you today? Happy Monday. Um, I know some of you hate Mondays. Um, I've told you this before. I don't care what day it is. I am just such a lucky girl that I get to do pretty well what I love every day. Albeit, there are parts of it that I love more than others, but happy Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. Um, what did we do? Uh, Friday, Dave was here till 10 o'clock at night doing uh, my ceiling in my kitchen. And he actually, no, he, he was here 10 o'clock on Thursday. He came back around 8 o'clock on Friday to do some mudding. And now I'm just trying to decide whether I want to sand the kitchen now, knowing that I have two more rooms to do, or just do them all at once. And I think I'm kind of leaning towards the doing them all at once. And then I've just got one cleanup to do instead of three. So I don't know. I'll talk to Dave when he gets here and see what he thinks. So uh, I don't know. Is the summer busy time for him? Eh, I'm not sure. Heating, air conditioning? Eh, I don't know. I'll talk to him anyway. So um did some thrifting over the weekend, did some retail arbitrage over the weekend, which is a new thing for me. I went to um, went to the outlets on Lundy's Lane and came across some great champion uh, totes, which um, they were very, very inexpensive. So I picked up a couple and I put them on Marketplace to see if I could uh, make a few bucks on them. Uh, We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Not really something I'm interested in doing, but uh, I was picking up some stuff for my daughter for her birthday the end of this month. And um, I guess one good thing about having a mom who's somewhat involved in fashion is I do keep up on what the trends are. I've got some more trends for you here that I've been taking notes. I tell myself I'll remember, but I don't. So I hope it's okay that I look at my notes and that way I get it right. So anyway, she she seems to enjoy what I pick up for her. She's like my little dress up dolly. I mean, Sarah's what, 5'9 and probably a size 8 or whatever. And I mean, she's just stunning. So I'd walk around naked if I looked like her. <laughs> and I've told her that many times. She gets so embarrassed. But I remember we took her to the uh, hairdressers once and she has a very full booty. She gets that from my dad's side of the family. Our booties are just big. My dad's side of the family, they're just full. And my, I guess, I think I was told at one time my dad used to have to get his shorts uh, made separate from the rest of the team, the soccer team when he was a professional, because his thighs and his butt were so big. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, but she has a very, very curvaceous figure. She's got nice full lips. She's got dirty blonde hair. And we were sitting in the hairdresser's chair and the hairdresser said to her, she says, you know, you have three things that people I know personally have paid a lot of money for. A bum, lips, and hair. And I don't know that that ever registered with her, but um, she's a very lucky girl. Actually, I know we all think our own kids are amazing looking, or we should, um, but both my sister and I, even my my cousins in, I mean, Claire, my cousin, her daughter's a model, uh, my Auntie Pat, um, Joanna, my cousin, her daughter is a model, Sarah modeled for a while, so uh, we got good genes in our family, and the boys aren't bad looking too. My two nephews are so handsome and my own son is a is, uh, bit of a grizzly Adams these days. I don't know. We bug Harry all the time. But, um, but anyway, so that was my trip to the falls. I need no excuses to go to the falls. None whatsoever, whatsoever. I'm actually at this moment, Hidden Niagara, Creation of the Niagara Gorge. I'm watching that on YouTube. It is absolutely fascinating. So, and it's really interesting to actually get some of the history on some of the places that I go on a monthly basis. So I know I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky about a lot of things. Saw Jules and Brad over the weekend, a little bit of a surprise visit. We went to go and pick up the utility trailer at the trailer, 
frozen to the ground. So needless to say, we didn't get that. But Jules and Brad were, as we were pulling into the gate, because the gate's not open right now because this park's closed, you have to call the uh, security guy. And as we were pulling in, Jules and Brad were pulling in right behind us. What are the chances of that? I told uh, Jules it was the cosmos because us girls had a brutal week last week. We were, Christina, myself, Jules, everybody was just... Carrie, I think, had a bad week. I don't know. It was a full moon, and I worked in retirement homes, and that is a thing. I know people say it's bullshit, but it's not. It's a thing. Our residents were crazy on uh, full moon nights. But I got some good bags. Uh, not anything that I'm going to show you today, but I've got an amazing few bags for you today. One, I not my style. But, oh my goodness me, for people who like bucket bags. I love watching Dion Dean because she truly, truly struggles with keeping every bag she thrifts. And she makes no bones about it. She's mostly thrifting for herself. And if she finds something along the way, she'll pick it up or she'll use it for a little while and then pass it along. Uh, and that's, I tend to do that a little bit too. So... Anyway, bag number one, summer is coming, spring is coming, and I'm starting to uh, get excited about some of the cool colors that I have in my stash. Now, this is a real kind of, I don't know what this is called. It's green, but it's turquoise, but it's it's, it's actually probably more green than it's showing on the camera. It looks a little more blue. And I know I haven't listed any of these yet. I wanted to get this video done because if Dave shows up, then I won't be doing any videos. So I wanted to get it done. Um, the pictures that I have on Etsy, I think all but one are a truer color. There is one of the interior that is uh, very blue looking. But this is just awesome. It's shoulder. You could get a crossbody, but I think it would look silly because the straps are very close together. But I think the key thing with this bag is you can put the straps inside and it works way better as a beautiful clutch. I, again, I wish clutches were in more use than they actually are. So you've got this little magnetic flap and then you've got, you've got these little, these little things that kind of, now I want to say this is sixties, but I don't think it is. I think it's eighties. Now I know Pauline, my customer in Toronto um, has a high fashion handbag outlet still in her neighborhood. I haven't been able to find out enough about this company to know that they were around in the 60s. I think that might be pushing it a little bit. I mean, it does have the velvet insides and this kind of closure is very indicative of the 60s. So I really, if I knew this company was around the 60s, I wouldn't even hesitate, but I don't think they were. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Either way, it's either, I know, but 60s is way cooler than the 80s. Well, I guess it depends who's buying it. I mean, I think the young kids, the 80s is a real kind of go-to uh, fashion era right now. But it's in absolutely fantastic condition. There is nowhere in the corners, which you would expect, especially with a color like this. But see my nails? This is uh, a week and a half. I still keep picking my fingers. But oh my goodness me, I'm so happy. I even filed them today because they were getting so long. I'm ready for a color change though. I don't really like this paley whaley. It makes me feel old. And I don't want to be old. Menopause is aging me enough as it is. Damn it. So that's bag number one. Bag number two. Wait till you see this. This is the coolest. Check this out. Ha, ha. 
isn't that amazing? And it doesn't open at the top. It opens at the side. It is um, Trina Turk, Los Angeles, Palm Springs. This is, um, there's no phone pouches or anything like that. There is one slip pocket. And in that slip pocket is a little mirror. So I'm going to say this is 80s for sure. Oh, actually, no, I, I have to rescind that. It's going to be late 90s because the company actually only came in to be um, at the uh, late 90s. So although I'm, very, I'm so tempted to say it's 80s just because of the color wave, but um, no, it, it's going to be late 90s. And metallics are coming back. Let me see if that's in my list for to share with you today. Nope, but I do have it in my notes. Metallics. I mean, did they ever leave? I don't think so. But how cool is this bag? Isn't it's just so unique. And the opening on the side is just if you want to make a statement with a purse. Here it is, folks. And it just zips up the side like that. And there you go. So that's bag number two. Now, this bag is absolutely gorgeous. This bag is a sling. Let me get the strap correct. Come on, you little pecker. I had it all set up and ready to go and now it's all so you can wear this bag like that let's close it up so it has the opening the strap opens this way now I guess you could thread this through just this bit and not have to worry about this strap getting in your way you could do that, I'm sure, or maybe not, because the strap, yeah, no, it doesn't open up completely. Oh, well, it was a good idea. Let's make it as bucket as, again, I should have stuffed it. I just took a bunch of pictures of it. So here is what it looks like as the bucket bag isn't that gorgeous look at this funky stitching there's zipper pockets there's slip pockets here now there are a few areas where the leather is actually you know what i conditioned it so it was just actually areas where the uh the chamberlains hadn't uh sunk in yet there's the base there's the back. Now this bag is by Browns, which is a very high-end leather store here in Canada. I don't know if it's in the States. Um, it's made in Italy. So you can, you know, you can wear the bag. Well, that's how it's supposed to be worn, I think. But, oh, it's just, if you're a bucket bag lover... The leather on this bag is so luxurious. So I'm going to open it up and let you see the areas where I think there's a just a little bit of uh, issue. So here, I don't know if you can see it, there's just a few blemishes and there's a couple of little scratches. Now I am going to, full disclosure, these scratches were pen marks. I would rather have a scratch than a pen mark. So what I do is I get my electronic file and I put, there's a very, very um, straight edged uh, grit bit, for lack of a better term. And I literally just touch the leather with it. It removes the ink stain because basically I am creating a scratch. Some people may find that to not be a good thing to do. But I would, like I said, I'd rather have a scratch in the leather, which looks way more natural than a big blue pen mark. 
and then there just is some darkening here and there's a little bit on the back as well if you can see that there's some just some little spots here now i have conditioned the crap out of this bag with that carm uh, chamberlain's leather milk so it could be that it'll it'll calm down afterwards there's a couple of little spots but i think any of you who follow me and who have been on my etsy page i try very hard to make the bags a reasonable price i've seen bucket bags for two three hundred dollars and i'm sure this bag was two three hundred dollars to purchase I kind of cut myself off at a hundred bucks. I mean, unless it's a vintage coach or something really, really, even some of the roots stuff, like I have not found a roots bag yet in all the weeks that I've been back thrifting. I've not found, I found one. Um, it was one of those uh, monogrammed totes, beautiful bag, but the inside pockets had been hand stitched. Let me tell you, Whoever stitched it couldn't stitch um, and it was it was in really bad shape inside. If I had to have bought the bag, I would have just taken the pocket off altogether because it was just a disaster. But they wanted 25 bucks for the bag, even in that state. And I was no. But other than that, I have not found a Roots bag. So, yes, I thrift a lot and I love it. And it's not a chore for me at all. But I do have to respect the fact that it's commerce. When things are harder to find, they're more valuable. And I hate kind of classifying myself in that, you know, uh, what's how do they say it? Uh, I don't know, uh, availability. I don't know. There's some little firm that, uh, some little uh, quote that you say, and I, I don't want to be like everybody else and, and, you know, charge prices that are unrealistic. But, you know, like I said, I try and cut myself off at $100. Most of my bags are between, you know, 55 and 75 And then you'll get a gem like this, which will probably be a little bit more. But bearing in mind that my prices include shipping, um, you know, I, I try to make... I try to make them as reasonable as I can. I am a very low income lady and I want people like me who don't have a lot of disposable income to be able to for, afford my bags as well. So, so inside is, um, it's beautiful. There's another, another pen mark. I'm not going to fart around with that because I don't want to uh, fade the lining. I don't have a problem with marks on the inside, but I hate pen marks on the outside. And there's the Browns uh, Italy tag. Amazing quality. Amazing, amazing quality. And this little stitch detail in the front is just so unique. Anyway, so that's my three bags for today. Um, so I've got a few little bits and pieces to share with you. So as I said, I'm, I'm referring to my, my notes. Box bags. Box bags are very, um, I don't think they're very practical, but they are very fashionable. And geometric shapes are very in as well. Specifically circle bags and anything triangular. And, um you know that it i mean are they useful functional probably not they're just fashion statements the next thing is fanny packs and they've been back for quite some time so this weekend i said i was doing some retail arbitrage so i found this little uh coat uh coach champion little fanny pack so i picked that up actually it's probably going to end up going to sarah but uh I put it on Marketplace. There, there was more where I got it from. So if it sells, I can go and get her another one. So that's um, that's just something that's trending right now. Uh, wristlets with chains. That was another one. I took all my wristlets off the door today just in case, you know, some sanding happens today or whatever. So I didn't realize how many of them I had. But the chain strap the chain element 
it's huge it's huge uh, another name for the little poochette, the little shoulder bags, they call them armpit bags, which makes complete sense because they literally tuck right under here. I thought that was quite funny, so I, I kind of wrote that down. Monogram bags are back. So your LV, your C's on your coach, your F's on your Fendi's, your G's on your Gucci's. Um, I don't mind the monogram. I, hey... If I get the chance to own one of those bags, as cheesy and bougie as it sounds, I want to care. I want to rock it. You know, like I'm more proud of the fact that I thrifted it than how much it it's worth. That that to me is the kicker. I don't care that it's a two thousand dollar bag or whatever. The fact that I paid eight ninety nine for it, I'm like bang. <laughs> that's that's what gives me goosebumps. So. Monogram, I like the monogram. Uh, not for everybody, but uh, I do like the monogram. And totes. I mean, as if totes ever went out of style. I don't think they did, but that's just a few. I've got a few more, but I'll save them for another day. Um, that's just a few things that I saw. I'm only looking at purses, really. I'm not really looking at shoes or anything like that, albeit I've got a ton of them. But, um, yeah, so... I've gotten some new subscribers, so welcome if you're new to my channel. Um, this little hobby project of mine, and I'm sinking as we're talking because this darn freaking ring light holder thing is falling apart yet again. So I will tape it up and I'll be back up in the sky with you when I fix it. But um, my name's Lynn. I live in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I am a recreational therapist by trade. However, I sell vintage and gently used purses for a living, as well as still working. It's a hobby. It's it's not, you know, uh, let's let's not uh, make it any bigger than it is. Um, there's probably an opportunity for it to be crazy successful in a bigger format, but I'm 53 years old and I don't want to work that hard. I will be really honest, albeit that it's on my mind 24-7. I woke up this morning and the first thing I thought of was that bucket bag because I wanted to get to that and fix that pen stuff. So, um, and I'm sinking. <laughs> My phone's going to fall right out of this anytime. Anyway, we're already 22 minutes in, way too long. As usual, it's a beautiful day. We were supposed to get to 10, 14 today. Leather bag lady weather report. I don't think that's going to happen. But it's sunny, and if I can get out on the deck for half an hour, I will. I've been out twice already, and um, it's just my zen place. It's where I think and create and... And I've already booked my next trip to the falls, uh, end of this month. So, um, yeah, looking forward to just, you know, the weather getting better. Uh, clocks uh, go forward this weekend. So uh, I wish they'd just make a decision on, on that and not do that twice a year. It's such a pain in the ass. Um, anyway, have a great rest of the day. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.